McGowan, and I am your teacher tonight. Um, I live in Japan. I've lived in Japan for 33 years, a long time, but my home country is America. I'm from Chicago. Um, so I speak with a Chicago style of speaking, I suppose. So it's good to see all of you. Thank you for coming and joining us tonight. This is basic writing number four. And um, <clears throat> we'll jump right into the writing and in a few minutes, I just want to talk to you first, if you can introduce yourself and tell us about yourself. So also check your microphone to see if it's working. So Lucas, how are you today? Oh, is your microphone okay, Lucas? It didn't respond. Okay, try now. Hello, hello. Lucas, are you there? Lucas, you maybe have a microphone problem. It, your microphone is maybe working, but sometimes Zoom has microphone problems. So I wish it didn't, but it does. So I'll have to work on that. All right. Uh, let's go to Koa from Singapore. How are you, Koa? I'm great. Now, do you use your name Doan or Koa? Which do you like My better? My name is Koa. Koa, that's a cool name, Koa. I like that name Koa because K-O-A is a kind of really beautiful wood and they use it, Koa wood comes from Hawaii and they use it to make guitars. So Koa guitars are really beautiful guitars. So <laughs> Koa, how old are you? I'm 10. 10, yeah. yeah. So in Singapore, do you say you are a primary student? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Koa, what's your favorite class at school? My favorite class, I think it should be my favorite subject as well, which is science. Is science, very good, very good. And do you like biology, earth science, geology, physics, chemistry? I like physics. Oh, very nice. Do you know, Koa, I was teaching in uh, Taipei, Taiwan two years ago with a genius physics teacher named Sean. He was such a funny guy. And uh, I used to follow his science physics lectures. Um, I can understand a little bit, but it, it, it's so difficult physics, Koa. So good for you. I'm glad you <laughs> like physics. Yeah, excellent. Really good. All right, let's see. Uh, we have a student named uh, Ando. Andao, how are you? I'm great. Good, good. And um, are you in Vietnam? Yes. Yeah. What city do you live in, Andao? I live in Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City. What's it like today? Is it cool, sunny, warm? It's raining. Oh, rainy. Okay. Did and you cold? Yeah. Oh, it's rainy and cold. Did you stay inside all day? No. Oh, yeah. I, uh, after this class, I'll go hang out with my friends. Oh, very good. On rainy, cold days where I live in Hiroshima, Japan, uh, I, I stay inside because the rain gets cold in November. So I'm kind of weak that way. <laughs> Anda, what's your favorite class in school? My favorite class at math. Yeah. Very good. So we have math and physics. All right. Let's try with Ty. Is that Ty with the beautiful pink flowers? Ty, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Good. I don't see you in those flowers. Are you hiding in those flowers? <laughs> Maybe. Are you a little, oh, it's Olivia. Are you a little bee, like a little bee going from flower to flower, Olivia? No. Okay, I'm just checking because, you know, some students have the ability to change themselves into a honeybee. <laughs> I'm just joking. A bee. A bee. Olivia the bee. Buzz, buzz. Olivia, how old are you? I'm 10, but this year I'm um, 11. Oh, 11. That was a happy time in my life, 11 years old. Um, what's your favorite class, Olivia? My favorite class? Hmm. Uh, I think hmm. I like well, subjects, right? Yeah, for a subject or a class. <laughs> subject, yeah. uh, I like art, math, oh. and English. 
Nice. You like art. Do you like painting or pencil art or sculpture or computer art? I like all of them. Oh, nice, nice. All right. So very good, Olivia. Nice to hear. And we have a student named Hannah or Hannah. Is it Hannah or Hannah? Um, Hannah. 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 And what does Hana mean in Japanese? Um, it means flower. Yay! <laughs> Very good. Hana, where do you live? I live in Vietnam. Yeah, what city are you in? Um, in Hanoi. Oh, Hanoi. Now, how's the weather? The um, student told me it's rainy in Ho Chi Minh City. How's the weather in Hanoi, Hana? Um, it's quite windy, not too cold. Oh my gosh, windy. Now, do you like windy days? Um, of course. It's, <laughs> like, it's not sunny and yeah. uh, cold. Yeah, windy days are kind of interesting. Um, but if you have an umbrella, sometimes it's if uh, that can be a problem on a windy day. A windy day with an umbrella would be kind of funny. Okay. Oh, we have Mr. Draffy, the master <laughs> hamster. How are you? Nice day. Draffy. Yes. How is your microphone? Uh, is that good today? Oh, it's coming in and out, Draffy. You have to work on it. Work on that microphone, Mr. Draffy. The master hamster. <laughs> hey, Draffy, is that a new name, Master Hamster? I think it's a nickname. It's pretty cool as far as a nickname goes. I really like it. All right. How about uh, a student named Can three one seven eight nine eight zero zero three Nuyen? Are you there, Nuyen? Nuyen not. Nuyen not. The name is so long I can't get the whole name. Let me just put on the microphone. Are you there? Maybe not Min. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't know. All right, CC is back. How are you, CC? CC. I'm good, teacher. Good. I haven't seen you in about two or three weeks. And so how is school? Um, I always go to school. Hmm. And uh, today I doesn't have when to go to school. OK. Does it feel good not to go to school on Saturday to take a break? Yes, Saturday mm. and Sunday. Oh my gosh. What did you do today then, CC? Um today mm. at uh eight forty five mm. I had a class of Cambridge. Oh Cambridge. Now what did you study with the Cambridge? I study level pet. Yeah. Uh I study Reading and writing and okay. speaking. Good program. Yeah, reading, writing, and speaking. Yeah, Cambridge programs are good, CC. Very nice. I'm happy for you. Good, yes. good, good. Thank yeah, you. Nice. Congratulations. And let's go to Lynn Khan. Are you there, Lynn Khan? <clears throat> Hello. How, How are you, you today, Lynn? Lynn, were you my student um, before, or are you a new student? <clears throat> uh, I'm a new student. Okay. This is the first time I attend this class. Yep. Well, it's nice to meet you, Lynn. Nice hey, to meet you. What city do you live in? Um, I live in Bucknell City. Okay. And how's the weather there? Uh, it's windy and cool, as the same as Hanoi. Oh, okay. So rainy and cool. I ask everyone the weather because Vietnam is such a long country that sometimes yeah. the weather changes from city to city. Hanoi might be quite different than a city in the south like Ho Chi Minh City. So very interesting, Lynn. Okay, and do we have um, Quan? Are you there, Quan? Quan Tran Bao? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Quan, what's going on? I just see the top of your head. Uh, Come on, it's Elvin. <laughs> Elvin. Hey, Elvin, did you know the basic writing, You, it's more creative than the academic writing? Are you going to do both styles of writing? Oh. Yeah, because you're in tomorrow's Sunday class too, right? 
Yes. Okay, good, good. Yeah, you'll see the difference between the academic and the basic writing. Basic writing, you can use more creative style than in the only the academic. But in both classes, I try to help the students as much as I can with really good grammar. But Elvin, your grammar is already excellent. So I hope in this class, basic writing four, we can see the creative side of Elvin to tell like a creative story, right? How are you oh, anyway, Elvin? Oh. Elvin, uh, mysterious guy, we can't see your eyes. <laughs> we oh, just see the top. Today, oh. So I don't have oh, much. So I don't have much energy for. Oh, tonight. okay. You're always so honest, Elvin. But it's great to meet you anyway. <laughs> great to see you. I've already met you. <laughs> okay. All right, Elvin. Thanks. Let's go to somebody else. Uh, let's see, Lucas Bach. Did you get your connection to work better? Um, is it working now? Yeah, it's working now. Nice work. Uh, you fixed the problem. <laughs> so you're also in Singapore. I'm happy to have these Singapore students. You guys are so interesting. You have that unique Singapore style of humor. You guys are like funny people. <laughs> I've been to Singapore seven times, Bach. Um, I used to go there before I was married. I would go to Singapore for Christmas time and spring vacation. I would fly from Hiroshima, Japan, down to Singapore. And I love that airplane. It would only take seven, six or seven hours. And the people in Singapore were so friendly back. I would go to uh, the coffee and tea places and talk to the waitresses. And I used to eat delicious cakes, but I can't do that now because my Japanese doctor mm -hmm. said, no more sugar, Brendan. <laughs> do you like food court? Yes, I love the food courts, like pizza in American food court. But in Singapore, my favorite food courts were the ones with Thai yellow curry, Hana, and the, the Thai yellow curry with chicken and potatoes and Thai orange iced tea with milk and sugar was so good. Hannah, do you like food courts? Um, I also love it, too. It's so delicious. What's your favorite food to eat at a food court, <clears throat> Hannah? Um, chicken rice. Oh, very nice. So we could maybe do a writing thing about food courts, you guys. That could be one of our topics. Why do you love food courts? Let me ask Mr. Bach. Bach, do you say Bach or Bech? Which way do you say um, Bach. Bach, that's funny, because tomorrow we have a student named Spooky Bach, and I never understood why he calls himself Spooky, but he's a wonderful writer. He writes these really amazing stories. So Bach, do you call yourself Bach because you maybe play piano? Name Bach. Just Bach. Okay. My wife is a piano teacher. She's next door doing a lesson, and uh, so her friend plays piano. She plays Bach music, B-A-C-H. It's beautiful Bach music. So that's why I ask you, yeah. Okay, hey Bach, what's your favorite class oh, in Singapore? Uh, my favorite class is physical oh, education. Oh, physical education, P-E. So what's your favorite sport? Uh, it's football. Oh, nice. And are you a good player? Oh, yes. Nice, Probably. what position? Probably. What position do you play? I play striker and keeper. Oh, striker, nice. I was a teacher in Saudi Arabia three years ago, and there were these really tall guys who are Saudi Arabians. They love soccer or football, so they wait until the sun goes down because it's very hot. And at their school campus, they have a nice soccer pitch with lights for nighttime soccer. So in the daytime, Bach, it's 50 degrees in Saudi Arabia, but at nighttime, it goes down to about 38 degrees, still very hot. And uh, my good friend Noah was the striker. He was a very powerful guy. So strikers are cool. Very nice. All right, Bach. Let's see. We have. Do we have uh, N Min? Min, are you there? Min, are you the same Min who came to last week's class? Min, Min, are you there? And Dot, Dot, you were in class last week, right? Good to see you. Dot, how are you? Fine. Dot, we'll start with a new topic tonight, but I think CC knows the topic, and maybe um, some other students know the topic. Uh, but we have to do it again because we have to start from lesson one. Okay, how about Fook? Are you there, Fook? Yes, I'm here. How are you? I'm great. Why are you great, Fook? Because school is cool. 
School I thought, is cool. <laughs> That's yeah, wonderful. I, I thought school school were very very good. Very good. Did you get a good grade on your exams, Fook? Yeah, probably. Oh, nice. Like nines and tens? Tens. Oh, wonderful. Was that science, math, English? That That is English. Oh, very good. So happy to hear it. Fook, were you my student before in basic yeah. writing three? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. We, so we are in, I'm in CC and graphy. Ah, okay. So CC and Drafty, tonight's lesson is going to be on developing a character again. You guys already did this because I actually have CC is in my notes on how to develop a character. So CC, if we can use your responses from about three weeks ago, our final lesson was developing a character in writing. Now this is a creative style of writing and this is a basic writing class. So we'll do the character development. You guys really help create a character. Um, but this is also good for reading you guys because if you create a character for um, writing class, you can use those same skills to understand a character in a story. So if your teacher says, I want you to describe this character in the diary of a wimpy kid, Greg, and then you guys say, well, how can we describe Greg? Well, this is the kind of writing that can help you describe Greg, which so many of you know about Greg, right? Or Harry Potter, describe one of the Harry Potter characters. This style lesson can help you do that. I promise. Is Fawn here? We have to check with Fawn. Are you there, Fawn? Kim Vong? Fawn Kim Vong. I have to check to see if everyone's microphone works. Okay, Lin Khan, Hana, CC Elvin, Draffy, uh, Andau, Olivia, Min. Okay, so I tried my best to check everybody's microphone. Let's check tonight's lesson and we can see what this is. It's creating the character. Again, Draffy, you know this, CC knows this, because look, there's Draffy talking about the Wimpy Kid story, right? So these were your responses. Um, let's see, somebody likes to read. Hannah, you like to read. Hannah, Hannah, right? Um, yeah. Can you read probably all of this? Okay, creating a character. Mm. We have read many books and some of them probably had great characters in them. Do you remember cheering for them or feeling bad when things went wrong? Think of some characters you remember from stories and books you have read. I will record your answers here. Name the book, the character, and describe this character. Mm -hmm. oh, the last hero. Main character is Jackson. He's a teenager. He's a normal guy. He's special because he's the son of Zeus, king of the gods in Greece and Rome. The stories are really good. Mm -hmm. Draffy, the mm -hmm. one kid stories. The main character is Greg something. Greg is so lazy, but he shows new things from his life, and it's fun. And it's a funny life. He's not very intelligent. He doesn't think he's funny. He actually thinks he's going to be a great rich man in the future. He dreams a lot. <laughs> Wimpy kid Mark. Mm -hmm. Actually, I like his brother Roderick. The brother is lazy too. He gets angry easily. He's the older brother who fights a lot with Greg. Always Greg's fault for the problems. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. Nice reading. Hannah, do you like the diary of the wimpy kid? I didn't really enjoy it. Oh, you but, didn't um, really enjoy it. But you did read it? Um, yeah, a few of them. Did it just seem weird? <laughs> like boy's humor or something? It's not that funny. It's just like um I can't explain, but it's um um it's normal. It's just normal life, yeah. So not so interesting. <laughs> and a great answer. It's hard to describe. I just don't think too much about it. Hey Koa, do you know Diary of a Wimpy Kid? No? Okay. Uh how about uh, Bach? Do you know the diary of a wimpy kid with Greg? Yes. Yeah, what's Greg's last name? Do you remember? Uh, I also don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Did you like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Bach? Did you read it? Yes, they are funny. 
I they love a sense of humor. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Do you think he's a kind of a weird kid? Uh, probably. Yeah. Okay. So we can do this. Greg, Greg is kind of weird. <laughs> Nice. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's go to another person, Olivia in the beautiful fields. How are you? Hi. Is the microphone? Hey, Olivia, can you read the next part? This is what a student named Kuang said. Uh, and fun. I like Harry Potter. I like magic. And Harry knows how to use it. How about Harry? Did he always know he was going to be great? He doubted himself a lot when he was younger. We, the readers, knew he was going to be great. We knew this because his character seemed good. He almost never got angry until someone really tried hard to hurt him. Mm. Tintin <laughs> be kids Greg. More on Greg's character. He has a little brother and a beast friend. Greg um, I don't know how to say oh, it. Uh, manipulate, like control them, kind of mean you control the other person. Manipulates. Greg manipulates the friend. Mm. From the details, we can see that Greg does not have the best sort of portals or character. Good quality. Little Princess. It's a story about a girl's life. Little Princess is just a nickname, and her real name is Sarah Creel. It's a true story. Sarah is intelligent, and her family is very rich, but her dad died. He turns into a poor person. This is a big change in her life or everyone, anyone's life. Very nice. Great reading, by the way. Thank you so much for that, Olivia. I'm impressed. You guys are good readers. Um, we have to check a vocabulary word, you guys, um, because Hannah said, what's manipulates? Or another person said, what's manipulates? Olivia asked that one. Manipulate in English and in Vietnamese. Tao tung. Okay, tao tung. Manipulate. 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 Now, for our students from Singapore, you guys probably know that in English, but we could always go to the uh, Chinese traditional. Do you think, is that okay, Koa? Or do you want the... Um, the Beijing style is the Chinese simplified. What do you think? Is that a any, pretty good one? Any, any, of any of them are okay. All right. I asked because when I was teaching in Taiwan, they always wanted traditional, this one, Kaozong. Kaozong. Yeah, manipulate you guys. So if any of you are studying Chinese, there it is. But in Vietnamese, it's that. And there it is. Oh, oh, Vietnamese. And there it is. Tao Tung. Now, let me just check. Is there um, Cantonese? Because that would be Hong Kong. And Canton is very close to North Vietnam. So some of you guys know Cantonese. But uh, let's see. Cantonese. Oh, my goodness, you guys. There it is. Cantonese. Uh, but there's no pronunciation. So if you live near Hanoi, some, some of you know Cantonese. All right. But there's no pronunciation. But most important. Manipulate. Manipulate means to control other people, right? It's not a nice word, actually. Manipulate, like your mother might say, don't be friends with that boy. He manipulates other boys to give them money or something. He's like a bully. So bullies manipulate people, you guys. So it's kind of a negative word, manipulate. Hey, um, Koa, can you help me with going back to the lesson? And uh, the thing that I wanted to do is these questions are really important. Could you... Um, read the the, um, the guidelines for creating a good character. How do we figure things out about this character? There are a few different ways. The book's narrator tells us things. From things the narrator says and how he or she says it. From what the character does, hmm. from what other characters say about the character. Yeah, character. Did I spell that character? Yeah. Um, this is interesting. We're talking about the narrator of a book. And sometimes you don't know who the narrator is for the first chapter. It's kind of mysterious. And you have to get to know the narrator. 
and you say, who is this person talking? Who is this person writing this book? And that's what makes some books really exciting. Um, so when Harry Potter starts, we don't know too much about him. We just kind of jump into the story and we quickly realize there's this boy who has pretty terrible parents and a brother or sister, I forget, and they're not nice people. And then we quickly understand they're not really Harry's parents. They're just taking care of him, right? I think, is it his uncle or something? They're just not the nice, nicest people. All right, so this story is kind of long and sorry to Cece and Drappy because you've already read this story, but I want to show the characters. Here's a sample story I wrote. It's mostly a fiction story about two boys. Teacher Brendan, of course, is the narrator. I'm the narrator. But there are other character details we learn from what people have to say. So let's give you this first part here with these pictures. Now, remember, when you read a story, it's good to quickly look at the pictures. So we see this is an old woman, an open door, an old style house. So this is going to be interesting, I hope. Um, Andoa, are you there? That was, yeah. Yeah. Dao, do you like to read? Okay. Okay, here we go. Here's Dao. Ben and John's mother was going to have a baby girl, and their parents decided to good be best so Frank and John went to their grandmother's house to stay for two weeks. With the new babies arriving, their mother would be too weak and tired to take care of everything and their father was very busy at work. After two boys went to their grandma's house, before they even got there, they had heard story from their cousin that staying at their grandmother's place would be difficult. Grandmother Belty's husband, Bill, died a few years back, and the old woman had become a big angry about that small thing. She would shout if the grandchildren visiting did thing like leaving the screen door open. The old woman would shout, you must not let the bug. There were other things too, such as talking shower too long, the old lady would call her. Hot water costs money. It's not as it's not free. Top top keep taking such long shower. Frank mm -hmm. and John had heard all these story and they went nervous even before arriving. What if she began yelling at them? Yeah, very nice. So let's find another student here because I want to give you as many chances to speak as you can. Uh, let's go to Fawn. Are you there, Fawn? Is Fawn here? Fawn? Hello, Fawn. Check the microphone. You turned it on, but I don't hear anything. Fawn, try, try. Can you turn it on? Oh, no. Okay. Let's, let's try um, CC. Are you there? CC. I'm here, teacher. Hey, CC. Now, before I, I taught you this story, but let me ask you now, this is a little different teaching style for you. CC, um, what can we say about the grandmother from the first two paragraphs? Um, um, John's mother was going to have a baby girl. Yeah, yeah, but what about the grandmother? What do we think about her? What do we know about her from these two paragraphs? I know her. Um, well, you can look at the picture, CC. Does she look like a nice lady? Yes. Okay, so that's a good impression. If you want, that's fine. Okay. Um, let's try another student. Let's try with Lynn. Did you get the microphone to work? Lynn, are you there? Um, we'll keep... here. Oh, hey. hello, Lynn. Lynn, from the first two paragraphs, what do you think? What's your impression of the grandmother? Um, I think she, my first impression from impression from her is um, she had a bad temper because and 
and she wants to keep a safe money as much mm. as uh, she can. Mm. So she often asks that grandchild grandchildren to uh save the hot water and stop not taking take in any box into mm. the house. Very good. Um, yeah, so she's a strict, S-T-R-I-C-T. -T. She's a strict yeah, grandmother. Yeah. Nice, you got it, Lynn. Um, I based the grandmother's character on my Aunt Mackie. She was my mother's oldest sister. She was very cheap. She lived in Florida in a small three-bedroom house. And when her children would come to visit and her grandchildren, she would only let them take a quick five-minute shower. Um, and she would only let them use cold water. <laughs> She was just so cheap, so I kind of based this character on her. I know it's it's uh, not nice, but she was like that. All right, how about uh, Koa? Koa, this will be kind of long, but I want to give you a nice big piece. Koa, do you want to try to read all of that? All right, here we are. Here's Koa. After their father dropped them off and said a quick hello to Grandma Betty, the old woman looked directly at the two boys and asked Sama coldly. You two are going to be good boys until the two boys shyly spoke up. Yes, we promise. The old woman then murmured coldly. Good. When their father drove away, both boys became very nervous. They headed upstairs and unpacked their small suitcases. Then they went downstairs for dinner. Grandma Betty seemed relaxed and not angry at all during their first dinner. She asked them the, the usual questions about school and she was very pleased to hear they were good students. She commented, Education is so important, boys. Your grandfather, Bill, was very a uh, very successful engineer because he studied math and science. Oh, the microphone went out. Uh, no, go on. Yeah, you're back, Koa. Go ahead. Your so grandfather. You, your grandfather, Bill, was a very successful engineer because he studied math and science every day. He loved complicated problems. I hope you two can be great engineers like your grandfather. Both boys now, because they really like PE in an art class but they did not want to tell their grandmother that. What if she did not like that kind of answer? The, the two weeks went by very quickly. As the boys went swimming almost every day at a local pool, swimming pool, they even made some new friends. But their grandmother would sometimes remark at dinner, Oh, that Anderson boy you both like so much. Well, I've heard he does bad things at school. And the teacher had... What was that in the future? What was that, uh, Koa? Oh, no, Koa's microphone. <laughs> Koa, do you have some more? This was the only time they would hear their grandmother get a bit, a little bit upset about something. So maybe the cousin's story was not completely true. The brothers began thinking, think their, to think their grandma, grandmother was mostly a very kind, gentle old woman who simply worried about things from time to time. And she seemed kind of lonely too. Okay. Nice work, Koa. Very good. All right. Let's get another student so we all get a chance here. Um, can we go to Bach? Hey, Bach, are you there? Yes. Bach, can you read the last paragraph of this story? One evening, they did experience something strange. Their grandmother would play old music from about 70 years before in her bedroom late at night. They could hear her talking to someone as soft jazz music drifted from her bedroom to the hallway. After this happened a few times, the boys decided to very quick, quietly get out of bed and walk like ninjas to her, their grandmother's slightly open bedroom door. 
She couldn't hear them because the music was playing a little loudly on the radio with a jazz program from a local radio station. Grandma Betty was lying in the bed with the lights on and talking to a photograph of their grandfather. She held up to her chest. She said things to him such as remember the time we took the car drive in summer all the way up to the lake with George and his wife Lulu. That was so much fun. The two boys looked at each other kind of shocked. They were not scared, but it all seemed so strange. Then they suddenly both felt very sad for the old woman. She truly missed her husband Bill, her best friend in the world. When it came time to say goodbye the next day, both boys ran to their grandmother and gave her a big hug. Their fathers could see the two weeks with Grandma Betty had been a real success. Now it was time for the boys to return home to meet their new baby, Sister Bella. The two boys never forget that summer, even as they became adults and had families of their own. Grandma Betty had taught them important life lessons those two wonderful weeks that summer. Very nice, Bach. Nice reading. Okay. So, um, in the end, if I can ask the question to Bach, how did Grandma Betty, at first, the boys thought she was an angry old woman. And in the end of the story, what was she like? Okay, there's a question. Bach, what do you think at the end of the story? I think Grandma Betty wasn't an angry woman. Yeah, so she changed? Uh, I think I think she never changed. It's okay. just that she is still a little bit lonely and uh, can get worried by from time to time. Hmm. Nice. That's a good answer, Bach. I think it's really good. Let me ask one other person. Hey, Olivia, in the end of the story, was she, did the, did the brothers like her? Um, the brothers didn't like her. Yeah, the brothers were at first afraid of her, but then they liked her. All right, good, Olivia. Okay, now listen, you guys, in each class, I give homework. So can you create a character? Tell us about this character. But Cece already did this, and Draffy already did this. So I want to change this a little bit, you guys. Let me see. Can you, let me change the homework, too. Can you describe a good friend? or a family member. Tell us about this. Let's say character, because character is fiction. This is nonfiction. Tell us about this person. Um, you could use in, a, let's say, a descriptive story for school. But you might also describe a real person. That's what I mean right there. So I don't have to put that in there. Take that out. Our goal will be one paragraph uh, of seven sentences telling us about this person. Use as many descriptions as you can to make this person really interesting. Okay, so since we have about 25 minutes of our first class together, can you use the chat? You guys know how to use Zoom, right? Um, so there's the chat here. Let's see, someone left me a message in chat. They said, sorry, my mic's not good, said Fawn. Okay, Fawn, that's fine. Okay, does everyone see the chat? <clears throat> Thank you for using the chat nicely. Mm. Some students spam the chat with crazy stuff. Promise me as you guys become friends in class, you won't attack each other with crazy avatars and 
stuff that says, I think Roblox is the worst game ever. And then you start fighting in chat. Please don't fight in chat. Some of my classes, they just all get crazy in chat. So promise, please, please use chat nicely, you guys. Thank you, Fook says never. Thank you, Fook. Yay, says <laughs> right. I think maybe you saw some fighting in the chat room before, right? Okay, so with this chat, can you start with, you know, a simple statement like, I would like to describe, <laughs> thank you, Olivia. I promise, okay, um, I would like to describe uh, my blah, blah. Now, what is blah, blah? That can be grandfather, grandmother, uh, brother, sister, best friend at school, my favorite cousin, right? So even though I wrote blah, blah, which is kind of funny, um, there it is. I would like to describe blah, blah. <laughs> um, put in your own answer. Like, I would like to describe my grandmother. And if you can start with maybe three sentences each, because we have so much time, if you can write at least three sentences about that person, um, then um, I will copy and paste it, and then I will put it in Zalo. Then you just have to write three sentences for homework, which is pretty easy, huh, you guys, to do just three sentences for homework. So start today, because we have 22 wonderful minutes and, and decide what would you like to write about? Who would you like to write about? So you should first, I would like to describe my younger brother, Lucas Bach. Thank you so much. You got it right away. You pick someone right away. Okay. And then um, Lucas, you can, or Bach, you can write, he's younger. You said uh, younger. Okay. So you could say he's seven years old. He's medium. He's tall. He wears glasses like teacher Brendan or something. Uh, his favorite subject in school is something. Okay, best friend for Koa. Nice, nice. All right. So anything is okay. Just put it in chat, and then I will start copying and pasting for that in the other thing. Well, I'm his younger brother. Oh, he's your younger brother. Oh, wait, you two are brothers, Koa and... Uh... All right, so... <laughs> so, uh, Bach, you have to say only good things about no Koa, right? You say, oh, he's a genius. My brother's a genius. He was on Singapore television in a science competition. He took first place. <laughs> All wonderful stuff. Okay, Bach, <laughs> you guys are funny. Do you know, this is really funny, Koa, because four years ago, there was the terrible corona pandemic, and people were supposed to stay separate. And I did a Zoom lesson with two Japanese workers and they were both eating McDonald's hamburgers. And I said, you guys are both eating McDonald's in your Zoom rooms. And they said, oh, secret, we're inside our car. <laughs> and they shouldn't be so close together. And they're both eating McDonald's Big Macs. And I said, you guys are breaking the rules. You should be in separate cars of coronavirus. And they were laughing, hee hee hee. And they have masks, they take down the mask and they eat Big Mac and then they, eat their Big Mac because it was a dinner time lesson. So those guys were just so funny. By the way, that company where I was teaching them, we had to stop the face-to-face -face lessons uh, and do Zoom lessons. But at that company, half the workers from were from Vietnam, you guys. That's how I first started teaching students from Vietnam. And they were really good engineers. So it was really fun teaching engineers. Okay, so anything is okay. You guys can write funny answers if you want. Uh, let me see. I'll give you another sample. I will describe my good friend, John. He and his wife, Natsuki, uh, had a baby girl two weeks ago. Her name is Luna, which means moon in Latin. Um, she looks cute. Uh, Luna has two, uh, one brother, one older, and one older sister. I really love the older sister whose name is Hannah. She is very sweet. 
She is Japanese and Scottish. And she has beautiful blue eyes and red hair. Okay, so there I did that one, but I didn't put about my friend John, my friend John. Yeah, uh, Olivia said red hair. Yeah, her hair is kind of red because John is from Scotland. Let me see if I can get a picture, you guys. Wait just a second. He just sent me this beautiful picture. I think it was yesterday, you guys. So let me just take a look here. I'll get a picture of John's happy family, if I can find it, you guys. There it is, yeah. Okay, and let's see what we got. And let's see, download. Uh, okay, and let's see, to my desktop computer. I'll put the picture here if I can. I think I'll put it in the notes. Sometimes um, if I put pictures into the... Um, into the chat, it's too big, and then it crashes me out of Zoom, you guys. So let me show you here. Yeah, it worked pretty well. Okay, so can you guys see it? There is Charlie with the long legs, who is a footballer. He's a football player, uh, Koa, and he's very good at football. I think he's the striker. And there's Hannah with her red hair. <laughs> this is the new baby Luna, who probably sleeps all day. But John is a big guy, so all three kids, all these kids are really going to be tall, like 175, 180 centimeters. Uh, so they're really funny kids. And they live in Hiroshima, Japan. Okay. So there you go. And she really does have red hair, Olivia. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, we have Fook. Hey, Fook, nice work. You're a fast writer. Uh, Fook, I'm going to paste yours in here. And I'll paste these in because it, it helps the students if I can. And um, let me paste it in here while this is offline. What I absolutely have to remember, you guys, is not to paste things in to while I am sharing the screen. And I don't know why that is, but it's just kind of crazy. OK, Fook, here we go. Nice response. Nice, beautiful, long response here. And here we go. Fook, would you like to read this for everyone? If your microphone is the mic okay, or is that bomb's mic yeah. is having problems? I'm, I'm okay. Okay, here you go, Fook. Um, I'm just gonna change some of the spelling. Okay, you write like me. You write super fast, so it's easy to make some mistakes. And color is here. Now this is interesting. Koa, in Singapore, do you spell color the American way, or do you spell it the British way? The British way. Ah, there's color the British way. All right. Well, we have to do that because I'm American Koa. <laughs> All right. So, Fu, can you read it with the color spelling the American way? Uh, yes. Mm, my, friend my, my friend Jack has a very big problem. He's afraid of the color white. Mm. Every time he sees the color white, he gets shocked so badly that his heart stopped beating. One day, one day his mom finds a story in the newspaper. There, there's a doctor can delete a color from a person's eyes. But the problem is it is not real. Instead of deleting the color white, the, 
The doctor makes people colorblind. His parents did, didn't know about it, so they took him to the hospital.、Mm. He was shocked when he when he woke when he got up, because everything was is gray, and it looks like everyone does not have a happy life, because they were all gray. Then he managed to talk to his mom, but she doesn't believe him. So he spent all of his time in a gray dark world, until two months late later, he ends himself with a gun when he's only eleven years old. I remember this is a fake story. Okay, thanks, Fook. Woo! I was scared. <laughs> Fook, that ending is kind of scary. Um, Fook, I don't mean to laugh, but okay. Now, you guys, this is interesting that Fook chose white. Fook, do you know that thing in Asian countries, China and Japan, that、uh, white is sometimes a bad,、uh, bad luck color? Did you know that? I don't know. Okay, here's English white. White. And in Japanese, shira. Shira. But if you look at the word for dead,、uh, or death, death is she. She. And so you never give someone white color flowers in the hospital if they're sick because the connection to death she is too close to white, which is shiro, and so shiro, shira, shira. Now this is also true about the unlucky number four, and there's four in Japanese. But if you look at four in Chinese, and maybe Bach, you know this one, and Koa, you know this one. Of course, it goes without saying that this is. A unlucky number, si, si, right? And、uh, in traditional, it's about the same. Si, si, that's it. Si, right? So if you write the word death, there it is. Shi wang, si wang, shi wang, right? It's that shi again, right? So shi is an unlucky number. So the number four and the color white are not so lucky. It's bad luck stuff. So that's interesting. You chose that Fook for your story. Fook, did you know that? I didn't know. Yeah, kind of interesting, huh? Yeah.、Uh, yeah. I only know the number four in Chinese. Yeah, but then you know, in Vietnamese, it doesn't sound like. Gai chen. Gai chen. Yeah, but what about the number four in Vietnamese? Bon. That's that's not a bad word, is it? Bon. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's all I can think of for that one. Very interesting. Okay, let me go back to the chat. See how you guys are doing.、Uh, we have some new messages. Some new people want to try.、Uh, let me make sure that I'm not on the share screen for that story. One moment, please. Okay, and、uh, this is from Koa in Singapore. Nice. I'm gonna copy it. Now, um, at the end of the class, as the other students know. I um, will um, make a copy of all of today's class notes that you see here on the share screen that I'm going to put here in just a minute, and so then you can, if your mom says, "Well, what did you study in class?" You can say, "Mom, we studied this. Here it is, right?" <laughs> and so there it is, and、uh, so here we have from Koa, and I'm going to put your name here too, and so then if you want to use this for your homework, that's okay. Go ahead, Koa. You can read it. Miss Kelly, the head prefect of my school. I am counting on her and some other friends for me to become an executive committee prefect next year. Count.、Oh, is Kelly from Singapore or from like Australia? Singapore. Singapore. Okay, it's a great name, Kelly. That's why I asked because I know a Kelly from Australia, so she likes that name. Nice. And、uh, Koa, your brother. Wrote this one. I want to see. I、oh, have a friend from Australia. You do? What's a boy or girl? It's a girl. Um, she's also Vietnamese and um, Australian because his father, when、um, he was young, he was at the um at the bottom of Vietnam, and then there was war, and、uh -huh. then he he got the American and the Australian help, and then um the Australian helped him, and then he went to. There for ten years, and then he got the IT. Oh, okay. So he had to go to Australia just because the war was a little bit too crazy, and then he、yeah. came back to Vietnam. Yeah, that's good. I think that's good. I know some people like that too, Hannah. He's still in a um Singapore. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew a guy named Derek in Japan, and he his family um, left uh, Ho Chi Minh Harbor, and the Australian Navy picked them up. They were on a really bad boat. And he has a crazy story, but I can't tell you his crazy story because there's a dirty part of the story that's actually really funny, but you guys are just kids. And, um, <laughs> and uh, the story is just crazy. Maybe I'll tell you some other time because this is our first class. Your mom and dad might say, what kind of crazy class is that? What kind of story is that? All right. Bach, would you like to read this story? All right. <laughs> yes. He is, he is Koa. Koa. His favorite subject is science. He won global first place in science competition VJ, VNJSO this year. Nice. Um, what did you use, Koa or Bach? What did you use for your science project to win? It's not a science project. It's a paper contest. Oh, it's like a writing test contest? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I asked that reason. Remember, I told you about the guy in Taiwan, Sean the physics teacher, um, he, his students uh, competed in building robots uh, using um, circuit technology. So these were technology. So these were really advanced robots for the Taipei City competition. And I think there were three guys, they were the best students who built robots. They were pretty cool robots. So Sean, now if you say, how can I describe Sean? Sean is super thin. He has a, a really funny way of speaking English. He is kind of intense, uh, but he is also extremely intelligent. I hope to see him soon because maybe I will go to Taipei again and I want to visit Sean, the crazy science teacher again. Um, okay, you guys, let's see if we have some more answers here. I'm gonna stop that. And this is great. You guys are doing a wonderful job. So thanks so much. Uh, let's see, two new messages. Who do we have? I use Lego to create robots. Okay, Bach. Hey, Bach, did I tell you that story? <laughs> One time I was walking in Japan, and sometimes when I walk, I like to think of stories or think of new ideas. And I was thinking, what if you put all the Legos together and then they connected electronic circuits and you made your own robot? That would be really cool. And I, th I thought, should I send that idea to the Lego headquarters in Denmark as a, as a new Lego box set that you put it together and you can make your own robot? So I said, well, let me think about it. And then like six months later, a group of Israeli scientists in robotics and engineering gave their idea to Lego and Lego took the idea. They said, it's a great idea. I thought, that was my idea. But I didn't, you know, I didn't talk about it on social media. I just kept it in my head and maybe I told my friend, but I missed a chance to give my thing there. Hey, Olivia said, my house's color is white. Olivia, do you think it's a good luck color or bad luck color? I don't know. Oh, Olivia, I'm so scared. You like those pink flowers in your picture. Maybe you can paint the house pink when your mom and dad are at work. Maybe not. I don't think it's a good idea. You might get super punished for that, Olivia. <laughs> you may paint the house pink if you like. Hey, Olivia, when I was a boy, I was about seven years old, and next door was this really cute little girl. She was about two or three years old, and her father was painting the house brown, um, and then he went to take a break at lunchtime, and the little girl picked up the brown paint for the house, and she painted his car brown. <laughs> it was horrible. And he was so shocked that he had this ugly looking, he had a beautiful blue car, now it was painted with brown paint that you use only on your house. All right. All right. Hey, we have a good one from Andau. Andau, thank you so much. Andau, let's put this in the um, notes for today. And I want to see if, by the way, Andau, is it okay if I call you Andau or just Dao? Yes. Call me Cherry. That's my English nickname. Oh, okay. It's Cherry. C H uh, E R. Cherry? 
-E -R -Y. Was it, were you in my class in summer, Cherry? My friend is also named Cherry. Was she in the debate class that I was teaching in summer? I wonder. Okay, Ando, would you like to read it? Okay. My friend said, huh, the fun is special in my class. Also a little bit crazy. Like yeah, and here you might write do this. The come is okay. And he is also a little bit crazy. Okay, now Ando, give me an example of why he is crazy. He she's unusual. Okay. He do everything opposite of the normal person. Wait, wait. <laughs> He is highly unusual. And so, Andal, how is he highly unusual? I added the highly to make it more interesting. Fight. Oh, he fights, but that's not good. No. Uh, one day, that day is pretty hot, and mm. she uh, wear a thick blanket to go outside. Oh. <laughs> this, is a, this is a girl? Yeah, she's a girl. <laughs> Why did she put a blanket over herself? I don't know. Like, she likes fashion, but crazy. Okay. Yeah. Everybody believe it. And she thinks she's crazy, too. Okay. Uh, interestingly, she sees herself as creative. Was that it, or did you say crazy, too? Crazy. Oh, yeah. crazy. I'm sorry. I think a creative would be art style. Uh, does she want to change? Do the teachers want her to change? No. Okay. My teacher, oh, my teacher love her. Okay. <laughs> now let's use this one. Oh, um, by the way, our teacher loves her. <laughs> Hey, you know what, Andal, this is really good if you want to use this for your homework. Um, in Zaulo, in our group, you can just go to the sheet and you can just copy and paste this for your homework. So, um, Cheery, if your mom says, what's your homework? You can say, I already did it in class, right? Lucky, huh? Usually for the homework, it's one paragraph, like seven, seven sentences. Koa and brother... Um, Bach, you guys are almost done. All you have to do is add maybe three more sentences, right? That's fine. So you, this is, you guys, this is what I like to do in my classes. It's called uh, a head start in, um, a head start in your homework. Head start in your homework is important because then you don't sit down and say, oh, I have to do this homework. What, what should I write about? I don't know. This is going to be really challenging and I have a lot of schoolwork and it causes stress and you get tired. This way you look and you say, oh, I already did two to three sentences in class. So now I just have to add four more sentences and it becomes much more easy for you guys because you've done the hard work in class. Okay. Let's take a look at that chat and see if we have some more responses. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, is this a head start? Yeah. I, this... I, I literally write oh, yeah. the whole. That's true. Fook, you wrote that story last time. Do you want to keep that as your homework? Yeah. Okay, that's fine, Fook. You did a nice job on that. All right. Uh, Koa got the medal for the thing. Okay, Kaylee, this is wonderful. This is from Koa. And. Um, Okay, Lee, gonna put that in the um, notes for today. And I'm gonna put Koa so you can see the person's name. <laughs> you guys are just laughing because you guys are sharing your work and that's fine with me. Uh, in one of my writing classes, there was this really funny but crazy boy. He sounds like Cherry's friend. Everybody liked him. He was a really nice guy. But something happened, and he totally copied someone else's homework. And this boy, Tom, said, oh, he copied my homework. I'm really angry. And Tom was just joking. He wasn't really super angry. And the boy was so worried that he left the class. 
And so you guys, if that happens, don't, don't get upset. You know, we'll just talk about it. Like, okay, make sure you change this. So it's your unique homework. All right. You won't get punished. But uh, yeah, it was just a funny, crazy situation because everybody liked the boy who left the class. I don't know. He just got really nervous that he was going to get punished. I would never punish you guys, all right? Unless you spam the chat box. Then uh, Dr. Duke, who is the manager, will say, why are you spamming my chat box? All right. All right. So you guys, it's uh, 1032. We're a little bit late. So let me put the homework Finish uh, your character, your your um, character. Yeah, it is character. Descriptions. Um, use the information here, if you like. Um, OK, tell us more about this special person. All right, and then I'm going to copy this all for you guys, and then I'm going to put it in the Yalo thing or Zalo so you can see everything. By the way, Koa, they have Zalo in Singapore, and Bach, is it popular? Do a lot of people use Zalo? Let's ask Koa. Koa, do people use Zalo in Singapore? I mean, like, I'm a Vietnamese. I come from Vietnam. I came to Singapore when I'm one. Oh, so my gosh. We, so um, yeah. My parents also use Zalo. Oh, okay. Now, do you say Zalo or Yalo? That's why I ask, right, if it's Zalo or Yalo. Because some people say, teacher, it's Yalo in Vietnam. But if you're outside of Vietnam, you say Zalo, right? So in Singapore, you say Zalo. I guess. I'm just asking. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let me say goodbye to you one by one. Thank you so much, Ko. It was really a pleasure to meet you and your brother, uh, Mr. Bach. Uh, we have uh, that Olivia in the beautiful pink flower field. <laughs> and uh, Cherry, thanks so much, Cherry. Uh, let's see, Hannah, wonderful to meet you. Really good writing, uh, reading. Cece, always good to see you. And Lynn, thank you for coming. Fawn, very good. And we have Mr. Draffy. I hope to hear from you last week, uh, next week. Olivia, great job. Nim, we have to get your microphone to work. Fook, very good. And Dot, we have to talk to you next week more so you get more chance to talk to the other students. Some of these students look like mystery students, but they're actually really nice. They just uh, sometimes have microphone problems or maybe they're a little shy or something, okay? So let me just check the final messages. <laughs> All right, Fook said, even when we kill someone? <laughs> What's that? What's what conversation is that, Fook? All right. Um, thanks so much, you guys. I'm laughing because you guys are funny students. All right. Bye bye, everyone. See you next Saturday. I'm really bye happy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye, Hannah. Bye bye, Bach. Bye bye. Take care. See you guys. See you, Draffy. See you, Nim.